Hey guys, and welcome to another Rise of Flight video. And in this one, I'm playing as Captain Peterson. He's leading a flight of five uh, Newport 28s over the uh, over uh, no man's land. We're gonna go down towards, I think, the city of uh, close to Thor or so. Um, So we'll go ahead and get started up here, and the pink scheme is from the 94th Aero Squadron. It's the hat and the ring, you can see it here on the fuselage, and that was the name of their, their squadron, essentially. Alright, so I'll go ahead and take off, once my engine gets started here. Alright, and we finally got a good start here. <coughs> and you can see that I did upgrade to the uh, modern instruments, <laughs> I say modern, but uh, the it's for 13 bucks you can get the aircraft and the instruments so uh, for six bucks you can upgrade to the m what's called mods or modifications and includes the airspeed indicator there the rpm and altimeter uh, a turn and slip indicator which is the little ball right there and it basically works the same way as a leveler works if you've ever done any type of you know carpentry or leveling a photo or anything uh, you also have the clock down there uh, over here's your fuel gauge that big green cylinder and you also have the uh, compass down here as well. So it just adds a little bit. And it also adds this telescopic sight, which you can see through here. And this is the French version. There's also an American version of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take off. And it's, it's not historically accurate, this paint scheme. It's actually from another uh, pilot. But uh, this is Captain Peterson. In this flight, our second lieutenant, the lowest ranking officer in this flight, actually gets shot down historically. Uh, it's during May of 1918. Hope you guys enjoy. Got to nudge the nose a little bit forward here. And see if we can get her off the ground. Alright, there we are. Awesome. So to my understanding, the lead pilot would have a streamer on his aircraft or uh, just a way of identifying different airplanes in the formation. So I'm not sure if other, other less senior pilots could do that, but I th from my understanding it was a trademark of the lead pilot in the formation. And what's kind of cool is right now I'm reading uh, Eddie Rickenbacker's book called Hat in the Ring, or excuse me, it's called the uh, Fighting the Flying Circus, referring to the Germans, uh, where he recalls his accounts on the front. And the book, I think, was written in 1919, so just after the war, uh, and then it was republished in 1960. So I'm, I'm curious to read some of his accounts. And I, I kind of... I'm familiarized and so somewhat well versed with modern aerial combat, um, including you know modern aircraft, jets, maybe maybe some tactics and things like that. But when it comes to the old school World War One, uh, just basic tactics, it's it's the same and it's different. It's certainly the foundation that everything else is based on. But when you read the accounts from from the actual pilots uh, who flew in these very uh, relatively simplistic machines as they would call them and they had like seven layers of clothing on you know huge gloves they if they climbed up to 20,000 feet it was like basically like being on Mount Everest just out of breath and freezing uh, and they would have to fight in these conditions the wind in their face um, they didn't have they didn't wear parachutes and it wasn't because they didn't have them uh, I've recently found out uh, they did have parachutes available, but the some of the commanding officers felt that the pilots would simply jump out of the aircraft if things got too uh, too dangerous for them, which was kind of, you know, I understand the tactical reasoning behind that, but it's uh, very uh, inconsiderate of the lives of your pilots, and I really wish they would have not made that decision. It would save countless lives uh, just being able to jump out of the uh, aircraft. So... I mean, I, I think, you know, maybe there's a tiny bit of truth to that and that pilots know that they have an out, but really, you know, these guys are aggressive, they want to win, and certainly would not take an out unless they absolutely had to, at least I think in most cases. 
So that was an interesting uh, piece of history that I just learned. All right, so we're going to go out to uh, the first waypoint here to the northeast uh, along the river. And I'll show you on the, uh, on the map here. So here's the, uh, we're going to go up here and patrol this area. And then we're going to follow the river all the way down here towards uh, our patrol sector, which is down here. And one thing that's really beautiful about Rides of Flight is these awesome clouds. I'll take a small bank into here. And my guys are back there. Those are my wingmen. You can see the rain effects just pile on your goggles, which is pretty amazing. Um, traditionally, you know, as visual flight rules pilots, you're not supposed to fly anywhere near uh, clouds. And you could see why. I mean, you completely lose orientation. And this is before you had an attitude indicator, which would basically show you, shows you the horizon. It shows you where the ground is and where the uh, sky is. And it's very disorienting when you have no type of instrumentation, you know, to give you a clue as to what's happening with the, uh, with the aircraft. So, but it's, uh, I think it's very cool that they actually modeled flying into cloud and seeing, seeing water effects because essentially that's what a cloud is it's just made up of rain it's made up of uh... excuse me it's made up of water vapor so that's pretty awesome little details like that that make rise of flight just a amazing flight simulator and again one of the best flight simulators i think ever created it's pretty awesome all right so here we are at our first waypoint and uh... we're gonna go ahead and follow that river down towards the southeast into our patrol sector. Alright, so it seems like before we made that turn, we actually have some enemy.